In this third set of slides, we'll consider spatial two-stage least squares estimation for the spatial lag model. We'll have three parts. First, I'll discuss the concept of endogeneity in the spatial lag model, which we've already um, met in the discussion of maximum likelihood, but here in the specific context of choosing instruments. Then I'll outline the actual spatial two-stage least squares estimator. And finally, I'll touch on a little more advanced and technical material dealing with the best and optimal estimators. First, endogeneity and the choice of the instruments. So as we've already seen in the spatial lag model, one of the explanatory variables on the right-hand side of the equation is the spatially lag-dependent variable. So in the equation, this is y equals rho and the spatial lag wy plus x and the vector beta for the regression coefficients of the exogenous variables, and then an error term. To keep the notation simple and to um, make it more general in a sense, we can also collapse the two explanatory variables, the endogenous one, the spatially lag dependent variable, and the exogenous x variables into one variable matrix, the matrix Z, with an associated coefficient of coefficient vector of theta. And Z consists of a column with the spatially lag dependent variable, and then all the x variables, including a constant, and theta consists of the spatial autoregressive parameter and all the regression variables and the beta vector. As we've already encountered in the discussion of spatial lag for the, uh, in the maximum likelihood context, um, the spatial lag term on the right-hand side is actually endogenous and creates a simultaneous equation bias. And we can see this very clearly when we spell out the reduced form for the spatial lag model, where we first move the wi term to the left-hand side, and then we pre-multiply everything by the matrix i minus rho w inverse. And this gives us the reduced form with two terms on the right-hand side. The first term is this inverse matrix, i minus rho w inverse, times the exogenous variables and the regression coefficient vector. And the second term pertains to the error term and is the... Um, inverse again, i minus rho w inverse times the vector of errors. So then to get an expression for the spatially lag dependent variable, we pre-multiply everything by the weights matrix w, and we get that wy equals w i minus rho w inverse x beta plus w i minus rho w inverse u. And to just show again why this is a problem, one of the fundamental assumptions in regression analysis is that there is no correlation between any of the regressors and the error term. And in the case of the spatially lag dependent variable, we can actually spell this out. And we spell out the requirement that there is no correlation between wy and the error term u. And then we replace wy, or rather it's transpose, by the expression we just had um, above and eliminate the terms that are um, single terms in u. So uh, we only keep the quadratic forms in u. The reason for that is, of course, that the expected value of the error vector u is zero by assumption. So when we work all this stuff out, we get a very complicated quadratic form, which is actually a scalar, so we can replace it by the trace. I have illustrated this trick, this procedure, a couple of times already. So then we end up with this expression with the complex um, matrix expression, the, the spatial weights matrix times I minus rho W inverse which is not a diagonal matrix. And because it is not a diagonal matrix, the trace will not be zero, and therefore um, there is simultaneous equation 
bias. So given that we have simultaneous equation bias, one of the solutions is to carry out instrumental variables regression. So this is an alternative to the maximum likelihood approach. It's actually a very attractive alternative, especially in large data sets, because we don't have to make any distributional assumptions. The question is though, what are the instruments? Typically in a simultaneous equation setting, you have endogenous and exogenous variables, and the instruments come from the system of equations as the excluded exogenous variables. But here we only have one equation, so we cannot apply this principle. Instead, we look at what is the expected, the conditional expectation of the spatially lag dependent variable given the exogenous variables. And we get this by using the reduced form. From the reduced form, we know that the second term in expectation and expected value contains the error term, so it disappears. Though the, so the only thing that remains for the expected value, uh, the conditional expectation rather, of the dependent variable given the x is i minus rho w inverse x beta. And then by natural extension, the, expect, the conditional expectation of the spatially lag dependent variable given the regressors is this expression pre-multiplied by w. So this is w times i minus rho w inverse x beta. Now this is all very complicated, but luckily for rho standardized waste and weights, and since the spatial parameter is typically less than one, we can apply a series expansion, sometimes also called the Leontief expansion. And the series expansion um, makes the inverse equal to a sum of terms of increasing powers of the spatial autoregressive parameter and the weights matrix. So if we apply this expansion to x beta, we start with the identity for x beta, then we pre-multiply x beta by rho w x, rho w rather, so we pre-multiply x beta by rho w, then we pre-multiply x beta by rho squared w squared and so on. So the expression for the conditional expectation of the spatial lag uh, becomes w x beta plus rho w squared x beta plus rho squared w to the third power x beta and so on. And this uh, suggests a set of instruments which was first outlined in an article by Collegian and Prucha in 99 namely to just take the um, exogenous variables, which you always take as the instruments, the x, as well as the spatial lags of the exogenous variables for increasing lag orders. So the matrix of instruments Q consists of x, of wx, w square x, and so on. Uh, in practice, it is typically sufficient to use the first order spatial lags, at most the second order spatial lag. There is, however, an issue with this because if these lags are not sufficiently different, then we may encounter problems with multicollinearity. So in a nutshell, the problem, as we already knew, with estimating a spatial lag model is that the spatially lag dependent variable on the right hand side is endogenous and causes simultaneous equation bias. To fix this, we need instruments, and we get the instruments from looking at what is the conditional expectation of the spatially lag dependent variable given the explanatory variables in the model. And we can derive this from the reduced form for the model, and it turns out that it contains this inverse matrix I minus rho W inverse. When we use an expansion for that matrix, we get a nice sum of different spatially lagged explanatory variables, W, X. And these become the instruments in the instrumental variables regression for the spatial lag model. So in practice, we use the exogenous variables, their spatial lag, and possibly their second spatial lag 
but that's it. And then we move on to the actual implementation of spatial two-stage least squares as simply a special case of two-stage least squares. Special in the sense that the instruments are particular to this given problem.